welcome back to another week of basic study tips and if you are a new subscriber then hello you've joined at a really good time because this week I'm doing something a little different and I'm actually doing a Q&A of some of my tutors who work with me at VC Study Guide. So we all achieved a study score of 45 or higher in VC English. Basically I went and asked a few of them some typical questions that you would get as a tutor or as someone who has done really well in English for VCE. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you do like this type of video where I have a chat with a past high achiever, someone who has done quite well in English, then please give it a thumbs up because that will help me know that you guys are really keen for this type of information to help you guys in the future. Also, if you didn't know, I do have an ongoing competition running for two weeks at the moment. So by the time I release this, it will be one week left and one lucky winner will have the opportunity to come to my VC English Autumn Interactive Workshop. And so if you want to join in, make sure you have a look at the instructions down below. And not that I'm being biased at all, but I would definitely recommend you join in because I'm 100% sure that you'll gain something out of this workshop to apply to English studies for the rest of the year. I'll be announcing the winner next week, so best of luck to you guys, and let's get going with these Q&As. I wouldn't really put it down to a certain number of hours each night. I tried to avoid numbers and putting figures on it as much as possible. I tried to just study to the point where I felt comfortable with whatever I was trying to work on. Some nights that might mean that I studied for a couple of hours, some nights it might mean that I studied for four to five hours. It just depends on what I've been assigned at the time, what I've been having trouble with, and what was really going on in my school at the time. Okay, so for every week I made a to-do list, um, including work I had to do for every single subject. And I just spent however long I needed to finish that to-do list. So it can range from one or I tried to break things down as much as possible. Um, I never really wanted to get home from school and say, you know, I've got English, I've got math, I've got literature, I've got history. I tried to break things down into small and more tasks and say, all right, you know, if I work on my essay writing here and then maybe read an article for this, do a couple of questions for that, and try to break things down into smaller things so I felt like I had some accomplishment once I'd finished something and I felt like it was an easier way to work through things and just made it easier mentally for me. So the main way I stay motivated was just being around friends who really supported me um, and always keeping my end goal in mind. So I knew what course I wanted to get into, I, I knew the requirements for that course and I just did everything I could to meet those requirements and achieve the goal that I wanted. I'd always set a time for myself each week to pretty much do nothing and potato around the house. I would set every Friday night off to you know, do whatever I wanted, whether it be either going out with my friends or even just staying at home, reading a book or binge watching a TV show. Just having that downtime was really good to de-stress, take your mind of everything that's happening so that you don't kind of burn out and you kind of stay fresh. Um, not taking up the opportunities that were available to me, like whether it be extracurricular activities within school or even outside of school as well, like things like like either getting a part-time job or say a school play or an instrument or like dance or just something like that um, to do on top of what I was doing because at the end of the day like, VC is two years but you know there's life outside of VC afterwards it's another way that you can kind of de-stress as well and take your mind off study. I regret worrying the most because like before a SAC went exam I would always get really anxious and really stressed out even though I did do a lot of work for it and this was really like bad for my mental health and also for just my attitude in general. Uh, I felt like I got to a point um, in my final exam preparation where I got a bit complacent there's a bit of a difference between feeling ready um, for an exam and continuing to study and then getting complacent and taking your foot off the pedal and maybe not working as hard as you were and not meeting the standards that you set. So I think in a couple of my subjects I got a little bit complacent and I definitely did pay for it on exam day where I didn't quite achieve as well as I would have liked to. That would probably be the main mistake I felt like I made. A mistake I did during VC, um, more specifically for English, was at the beginning of the year I wrote too many essays. And that sounds really bad, but it's just because I wasn't ever really confident with how my work was, so I, I had to just continue um, writing and writing, and even though I wasn't really making any progress. So in order to be more efficient and to study more, uh, more smarter rather than harder, I just like made the most of the mistakes that I made in the essays that I did write and try to build on those in my coming essays and not keep repeating those mistakes. 
ATAR is a one week wonder and that's true. I know a lot of us stress a lot about what ATAR we're gonna get. I know for me, like I spent a lot of time using ATAR calculator trying to figure out what study scores I might get for each subject, what ATAR I'll get and whether it'll be enough. It puts a lot of pressure. It's not really needed because at the end of the day, it's just a number and it really doesn't define, you know, what you're gonna do in the future. The best piece of advice I got from BCE was to stay humble at all times. Um, even in subjects that I excelled in, say for English, if I was having trouble with something, uh, in the past I may have been a bit stubborn and uh, maybe just got annoyed at myself for not doing well on something and just moved on and forgotten about it and not improved. Um, what I tried to do in BCE if I was having trouble with something and say, well look, okay, I've not done this well, what can I do to improve, how can I get better? I went and sought help and I tried at every chance to see having trouble with something or maybe failing something, not as a negative thing, but as a chance and a need to improve. So I try to keep that positive mentality like that and realise that um, I do make mistakes and that I wasn't perfect and that particularly in something like Year 12 I was definitely going to make mistakes. So rather than dwelling on them and being really negative about them, I just tried to improve as much as possible. The advice I'd give to a student in BCE now is to really just relish the experience. Um, getting into, um, we talk about ATARs a lot and uni courses and things like that. Year 12 isn't the only opportunity you'll get to get to where you want to be, but it definitely is a good opportunity to do so. So it's a really small portion of your life. It's a few months of quite hard work that could really set you up for years and years of being where you want to be. So relish the experience, you'll make lifelong friends, you'll be tested, but you'll enjoy it. And to really just take it for what it is, it is hard, but it is fun. So. If you just try to be the best you can be, you'll be okay. Keep doing whatever you love. So keep going out and seeing your friends. Just as long as you're um, doing as much work as you can for your assessments and you know that you've completed all the work that you need to do, then there's nothing that should be really stopping you from playing a sport or um, practicing your musical instrument or just catching up with friends. <laughs> your hair. <laughs> and that's a wrap, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, please give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you have not already because we are a growing community here on YouTube focusing on VC tips for English and just VC life in general. And I will see you guys next week for the competition announcement. Bye! So I only wrote three and I was really happy with all three of them and I learned the most from those three. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, good luck for all your exams and I'm sure you'll all do really well. Yay! <laughs> With English, what teachers and examiners are really looking for is uniqueness. If you write in your own style, in your own way, they're going to see originality.